Okay, so I decided today's video we're going to do something a little bit more uh, experimental, you know? And it's not going to be weird. I, I Okay, whoa, 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 Techie. You're holding a skull and you're talking about doing something experimental. Should I be here for this? Like, no, 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 no. It's not going to be weird, all right? We're talking about a walking, talking skeleton, all right? It's fine. It's Brooke, okay? Do you love Brooke? I love Brooke, okay? And you better get ready because it's October. It's Brooke's month, okay? So get ready for copious amount of Brooke, which I'm fine with that, right? I mean, May is when you talk about Luffy. February is Robin's month, you know, Chopper is December, obviously, October just happens to be Brooke, and I had all this stuff up here from the Thriller Bark video yesterday, so I thought this would be a good time to do this. A while back, I don't know when it was, but I talked about how I was going to do a spin-off to Geography is Everything called Biology is Everything, and the first episode of that uh, series was going to be talking about how Brooke's body operates, right? How does it actually work with the Yomi Yomi no Mi and the soul power and everything? And uh, I know Oda himself probably didn't think of any reason for it. He was probably just like, oh yeah, he's a walking, talking skeleton that's you know, sings and you know, plays guitar. It's like, it's fine, whatever, right? Um, but no, that's what, I, I like doing this kind of stuff. I like sitting down and thinking way more into this than even the the author probably intended. It's kind of like when we went back to try to figure out how much like energy is actually in a bottle of cola, you know, because Frankie runs on Coca-Cola and he powers the Sunny on it, and apparently there's enough yield in like three barrels of cola for the Sunny to fire a laser cannon and to like be fired off with the coup de burst like a kilometer away. Like there's a lot of potential energy in this stuff, and of course I'm not a scientist. I don't know all these calculations and stuff. I don't even know where you would begin with this. Um, but there were people that went off and did the calculations. And I love, like, th this one right here where the calculation was that, like, yeah, it, one bottle of cola is equivalent to, like, a ridiculous amount of TNT. Like, it's insane. Like, there's, like, yellow cake uranium in cola or something in the One Piece world, apparently, for this much energy to be coming off of it, right? For all the weapons that Frankie's got and everything. So I, I like discovering stuff like that. It, it means a lot to me, all right? So today's video, we're going to figure out, yeah, the biology of Brooke. So let's get into this. Let's start off with the simple stuff. 52 years ago, Brooke was a normal flesh and blood human, and he suffered his first death. Uh, he was on the Rumbar crew. They were attacked by another enemy pirate ship. Could have been the Rocks crew. Could have been the <laughs> Germa, maybe. I don't know. But they used poison weaponry, and Brooke began to, you know, die. And everybody else on the ship, too. It, it wasn't a very happy day for the Rumbar crew, right? But, but, Brooke, prior to this, we don't know when, he ate the Yomi Yomi no Mi. And I'm guessing the Rumbar crew also had a Devil Fruit Encyclopedia, or they heard the lore about it or something, because they knew what the Yomi Yomi no Mi was. Uh, apparently, it was the Devil Fruit that when you eat it, it doesn't give you any immediate effects other than just the weaknesses. You can't swim in everything. But after you die, the fruit guarantees that you will come back and have a second life. All right. So obviously, Brooke had never died before. And I think even one of the crewmates was like, hey, Brooke, uh, how does that fruit of yours work again? And Brooke's like, I don't know, man, never died before. <laughs> okay. I guess we'll find out soon, right? So, um, yeah, the the, uh, the legend of the Yomi Yomi no Mi turned out to be true, um, except it didn't really work the way you'd figure. It, you know, you'd figure, like, you eat the fruit, okay, you die, and you immediately just pop right back to life, and you just, your, your little, little life counter just goes down to zero. It's like, okay, you got an extra life, now you don't have any. There you go. It was more than most people got, right? But no, apparently how this works is, um, in the One Piece world, at least, souls are real. Everybody's got a soul, okay? Oda doesn't go into too much detail. This isn't like Bleach or like Naruto or some st a story that goes more and more into like, this is the uh, power of your soul and this is where you go after you die and this is what all the things the soul can do, right? It's very ambiguous. Most of the discussions we get regarding souls are either from Big Mom or from Brooke, right? But Oda doesn't really go into like the, uh, the afterlife or anything a lot in One Piece. It's just not really a focus, right? But apparently what happened was Brooke's soul, which is like a Hitodama, just like a little wispy thing, leaves his body, begins to float up to the hair after, and then immediately gets slapped right back down to earth by the gatekeeper or whatever. Just like, all right, come on in, souls. Come on, come see King Yama. Oh, oh, oh you're the one that ate the Yomi Yomi no Mi this time. <laughs> I remember the last guy that ate that. All right, here's my fastball. Just grabs the Hitodama Brook and just hurls him back to the mortal plane. It's just like, oh, okay. Congratulations. You don't get to experience eternal paradise. Whip! It just throws him right back down to earth. However, he doesn't, this isn't like a cartoon, guys. He doesn't throw him right back down into a body. You know, like in Tom and Jerry, there was a few times, a few episodes where, like, Tom dies, and he's, like, gets to, like, 
St. Peter, who's also a cat, and he's like, well, I'm gonna send you back down to Earth for one day, and he just hurls him back in his body. That's not how this works, right? He just gets a guaranteed return ticket to the mortal plane. He doesn't even come back to where his body was, all right? So he died in the Florian Triangle, just adrift, so his soul ends up in the Florian Triangle, but at a different location, and it's foggy, and the soul can't find its, its, its original owner, its body, right? So the soul is just floating around haplessly for an entire year. So I guess souls rely on physical sight in order to find things. I'm like, okay. And then finally, after a year of searching, found the Rumbar Pirates abandoned, you know, ghost ship at that point, and his body, which was just decayed to a skeleton with a mighty afro, because even death cannot take away the mighty afro. And uh, the soul was like, well crap, I found my body, but uh, well, I guess I'll see. Now, it doesn't really matter much, and this is where the whole crux of this video comes from, um, it doesn't really matter much that the body is in this extreme state of decomposition, basically the most extreme state of decomposition you can imagine, because he's nothing but a skeleton, because the fruit's power is guaranteeing a second life. Not just putting you on life support, no, everything that you could do in your first life, this fruit guarantees in your second Alright, so if you were able to cry and laugh and sing and dance and eat and drink and sleep and other things, even if you don't have the necessary equipment for any of that anymore, you can still do it. So, discuss. How is this possible? Well, let's start with um, exactly how the soul inhabits the body. Originally, I thought maybe it was like Brooke's body, as in his bones, were nothing more than just a marionette, a puppet. Like, imagine the soul surrounding the body and just moving it around like this, right? But that's clearly not the case, and we know this because after the time skip, after Brooke improves with his devil fruit a little bit and learns a little bit more of the secrets of it, he's able to separate his soul from his bones. And when he does this, we very clearly see that the soul leaves through the mouth. If the soul was just this, like, invisible aura, this fog that was just surrounding the bones and moving it around like this, which, oh my god, that's terrifying. But if that was really the case, there'd be no reason for the soul to exit out of the bones. So no, that's not what happens. The soul itself actually goes inside of the bones themselves and inhabits them. And I guess this can make sense how the bones stay connected without muscles or anything. It's like the, the soul itself is the glue that's holding all these bones together, right? So just think of it like little soul of Brooke is inhabiting like the inside of the bone where the marrow is or something. Okay, there's a there's a cavity inside of bones, right? So that's where that's where the soul's hanging out, right? And whenever Brooke, you know, separate himself, like astral project him outside of his body, he has to physically leave his bones. So it looks like it's coming out of his mouth. All right. So that's one thing there. Just this makes me think of Brooke as some kind of like nuclear skeleton at this point. He's just like glowing green energy coming out of each individual bone. Okay. Like he's radioactive or something. But anyway, so, uh, what about all the different life functions that Brooke exhibits? Like I said, he can cry, he can eat, he can drink, and yes, the ultimate question here is, you know, Luffy said it best, can you poop? You know, and let's be honest here. I mean, like, I don't know where you're at in the world. I don't know what your living conditions are. It'd be kind of freaky if I did. But imagine you wake up wherever you are and you walk out of your house or your apartment or your log cabin or your spaceship or your underwater bathosphere, wherever you're at in the world, you walk outside and you happen to see a walking, talking gentleman skeleton hanging out in, in front of your house or your place of residence, just sipping some tea and just being like, ah, good morning, neighbor. Wouldn't your first question, of course, be you poop, strange skeleton? You know, that would be my first question, right? It should be yours. So, uh, yeah, how does he do all this stuff without, you know, without tear ducts to cry, without a throat, without a stomach to digest food? Um, he doesn't have a brain anymore. Why does he need to, like, replenish it with sleep, right? He literally a hollow cavity. There's a tone dial where his brain used to be, right? Okay. So, um, now getting a little bit more into, uh, getting a little bit more spiritual here, a little bit into philosophy. What is the soul? Well, I came to the conclusion of, at least in this story, the soul is basically a backup of everything that you are 
your personality, of course, your memories, because Brooke, of course, retains all that stuff from the time that he was alive. He doesn't have a brain to store his memories anymore, but still, he remembers everything about his past, all 50 years of which he spent aboard a ship with his decaying crewmates. So yeah, he remembers, okay? Which I guess also means he could be traumatized and depressed and all that stuff too, right? So anyway, yeah, he's got his personality, he has emotions, he has ambitions, he wants to see Laboon again, his trusted friend. So yeah, think of the soul in one part there as like the SD card that stores all of Brooke's memories and everything like of that nature, all right? So then when the soul inhabits the bones, the memories go there. Okay, that's fine because things like memories and personality and emotions, they're not very tangible. You can't really touch them. So you could just say, oh yeah, yeah, the soul is like an SD card that has all that stuff just stored in it. Okay, fine. But uh, what about the other stuff too, though? What about being able to eat, for example? What about taste? He can apparently taste Sanji's food and he really enjoyed it. So it's like, how does that work? Okay. Well, I'm going to take it one step further. Not only does the soul in the One Piece world retain the memories of the person, but it also serves as a um, memory of everything that the body was capable capable of in life. So it's not just a copy of the brain, but a copy of your taste buds and how your taste buds operated, a copy of your nervous system so Brooke can still feel pain, a copy of your digestive system. It's just a copy of all that stuff. So think of it like Brooke doesn't have a nose, but he kind of does. It's like a phantom spiritual nose, so he can still smell things, okay? He doesn't have taste buds. He doesn't have a tongue anymore, but he has a phantom tongue and a phantom taste buds, and they operate the exact same way as they did when he was alive, all right? And so that's how he's still able to enjoy the pleasures of like, you know, food and drink and stuff like that. Okay, Matt, that's fine. He can at least experience the sensations like that, all the senses that humans have, which by the way, we have a lot more than five senses, okay? I mean, just to go down the list here, we also have something called equilibriception, which we're able to like sense our general balance. So I can do this. Uh, itching and pain are two different sensory uh, things than just touch. So that's like a different kind of network there. Um, you know how certain animals have a good sense of magnetism, like they know which way is like north and you know, birds and insects will do do this for migration. Humans don't do that that well, but we do have some, there have been studies conducted that, yeah, we do have like a little bit of like magnetception kind of deal. Like, so there's other senses there. So let's just say, okay, Brooke is guaranteed all of these things, okay? Even if he doesn't have the organs that go along with them anymore, he's still able to do all this stuff. All right, but what actually physically happens though to the food or the wine that he's drinking. Brooke has, you know, oh, that was a great concert, Soul King. Here's some wine. And they just pour the wine. And they're like, oh, that's delicious. Thank you, manager. Glug, 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 glug. So what, does the liquid just drip out of him all over his clothes onto the floor? He's like, well, no, clearly not because, you know, he can eat food and everything and it doesn't just drip all over the floor of the sunny, right? It's actually going somewhere, okay? So this is actually a lot easier to explain than you might think, right? So he talks about this during his fight with Zeo. He talks about how his soul is not really supposed to be in this mortal plane. He's kind of talking about himself like, yes, I am an abomination. A soul is not meant to be in this mortal plane for longer by itself. It's supposed to have a body to contain it. You know, something like that, right? And he talks about how the underworld, once again, very vague terms talking about the afterlife of One Piece, but he talks about how like the chill or the cold of the underworld is channeled through this soul. There's an invisible energy source that's like generated from him, from his soul to keep him in this world, right? And so we're going to get back to that in a second and what that might imply, right? But it's an energy source, right? So I think it's entirely possible that when Brooke consumes food, the food just goes into him and then just gets turned into energy, which continuously fuels his soul. He's like a power plant, right? Now, when Brooke, and here's the here's the kicker. Here's the answer to the question. It's like, okay, that's great, Tekking. That's awesome. But how does he poop? That's what we're here for, all right? That's why I clicked this video, right? All right, okay. Well, I just want to clarify something here. Brooke never exactly specified how he poops. He just says, I do indeed poop, yes. That's all Luffy asked him. Do you poop? Yes, I do. There's a bunch of different ways that you could excrete things from your body. It doesn't have to be the way that, you know, humans do it, right? Um, so what exactly I'm thinking here is that he eats food 
it, you know, it, it goes on his phantom taste buds so he can experience the taste still. And it's like, mmm, that tastes so delicious. And it goes down, you know, his phantom windpipe and it lands in his phantom stomach. And at that point, the energy of his soul that's just radiating from his bones just convert whatever food he ate into pure energy, which then he continues to use with his, you know, his, like his sword and his soul. He can extend out of his body and all that kind of stuff. Right. And there is an excretion of that, but it's in the form of farts, just gas because he does also fart. That's a type of excretion. That's how he does it. He just, Oh, sorry, everyone. There you go. Mystery solved. Okay. So, there's something else here that is interesting, though, and it's, um, all right, so energy is a funny thing, you know, there's that whole law of thermodynamics, you know, energy cannot be created nor destroyed and all that stuff, right? And, uh, Brooke can do some pretty crazy stuff with his fruit. Like, we saw that during the bite, uh, the fight with Big Mom, the bite with Big Mom. Well, that's also applicable, right? He's busting out his guitar and he's like, Soul King concert. And then, like, the giant image around him and it's radiating off of him all this pure energy that's, like, knocking all the chess soldiers out and everything. And he's fighting with Big Mom and, you know, even with Z he can emanate like cold like straight up uh, the ice from the underworld he called it but it's like freezing powers sh shooting out of soul solid it's like where is this energy all coming from right well what i think is happening here is this this energy is otherworldly the energy is coming from this other plane of existence he's literally like in D&D &D terms, it would be like gathering energy from like the ethereal plane or like another realm altogether. You're like pulling energy out of that and using it for your own devices, right? And the Yomi Yomi no Mi is the um, catalyst for that. It's the thing that creates this connection because this connection is not supposed to exist. Brooke even said that. Like, yeah, I'm, it's not supposed to be a thing. I'm supposed to be in this world, in this plane of existence. I'm supposed to be in the other world right now, but I'm not. I'm here. So the Yomi Yomi no Mi creates this connection between between this other plane of existence and Brooke, and it stabilizes that connection, and then in order to maintain Brooke's life force, in order to keep his soul active, so it powers all of his memories and his phantom limbs and everything, it draws energy from that other plane of existence. So that kind of gets over the energy issue here, because this is another plane of existence we're talking about. This is the underworld. All right, so it's like, all right, all right, there's just this weird energy source coming from the underworld constantly being funneled into Brook, right? Which I love that because screw radioactive skeleton. He's like a ghostly radioactive skeleton. He's getting like powered on ghost energy from like Danny Phantom or some crap. I know, this is great, isn't it? Did you guys know Brook actually grew? over the time skip? Yeah, he got taller over the time skip as a skeleton. Hold on, I'm gonna take a drink really quick. Kinda hot in this room, I'm getting really fired up here, but okay, process this. He was eight foot, eight and a half inches before the time skip, and he was nine foot one after the time skip, right? And that's like three and a half inches he grew. So how is that? How is that the case? He doesn't have, he's a skeleton, how? So I think he used this extra power that he's getting, maybe from the food or also calcium. He gets power from calcium as well, like milk and everything, which, you know, that, that of course just heals him. That's, that might be a discussion for another video because that's not just Brooke. That's also Luffy. Luffy can drink milk and instantly grow a, re a new tooth. Okay. But anyway, um, I think it might just be a combination of like drinking or eating a lot of calcium. And then with this soul energy actually created new bone. So it's kind of like, th think about this, right? If he gets battle damaged, if he gets like cracks in his skull, like he did at Thriller Bark or what he did with Big Mom, all he has to do is just drink some milk and it cures him, right? It actually creates new bone where there wasn't before. Okay, that's great. But what if Brooke drinks milk or eats calcium, gets calcium in his system when he's already fully healed? That means new bone would be created. So if Brooke, this is the ultimate finisher what I'm trying to get across here, okay? If Brooke were to consume an entire vat of milk, then he would become a giant skeleton. Canonically, this has to make sense.
I mean, it makes sense, right? I mean, just, you drink calcium, you heal your wounds, right? Okay, great, because he's bones. Yo, ho, ho, ho. And then, you know, oh, I, I, he's, over the course of the time skip, he was a rockin' musician, so he probably got all the milk he wanted. You know, I was like, I went to all the finest vitamin D milk you can offer. And he just kept, he was he was on a milk binge for a while, you know? You know he was a rock star. He was hitting the, he was hitting the moo juice a little bit too intense. And uh, he ended up growing a few extra bones, and he ended up growing three and a half uh, inches, okay? So, you know, that that's Brooke right there. But yeah, no, more importantly, pulling energy from another plane of existence, all right? Is this like an infinite amount of energy? Well, infinite in the sense that I think Brooke, he can, he can constantly take a stream of this energy, but it's not like a lot at once. Like, let's say this underworld place, you know, it, it does exist. And it's this like, it's like the Soul Society or something in, in Bleach or something. Whatever. It's this other realm, right? I don't think Brook, you know, could channel all of the energy from this place at once. He would become like a skeleton god devil if he did that. Which does have potential as like a final move. That could be his awakening, actually. Oh my god. Alright, well, pause that for a minute. But I'm just like, I think right now, the energy he's pulling is just like a small amount. Just to keep his body processes going, right? Right? Just the bare minimum what he needs, right? And then he can maybe get some... And then after the time skip, he maybe learns some excess so, so he can do all the soul power that he does, you know, in, in the fight with Big Mom and everything. But an awakened... An awakened form of the Yomi Yomi no Mi. How would that work? You know, uh, I'm thinking if this is the case and he can draw this energy from this other realm, an awakened Yomi Yomi no Mi user could pull, like, a lot of energy from there. More than what they actually need. So I want you to imagine this. Brooke awakens his fruit, takes out his guitar. This is the final battle against, like, the Blackbeard crew or whatever. He strums his guitar, and he's, like, starts getting into a really hardcore, like, and then just energy starts to bubble out of the ground. Like, cracks begin to appear as, like, the souls of the damned are, like, pulling out, and they're all, like, grabbing around Brooke, and he's, like, you know that image that appeared behind him when he was strumming the guitar at Totland, like, that ghost image? Imagine that, like, becomes one with Brooke's body. Like, he gets soul armor, right? Soul armor. And he doesn't become, like, an actual giant skeleton. Like, he doesn't physically grow. But he becomes, like, a, a spirit. A giant spiritual skeleton, like, with flaming eyes and stuff. And just, whoa, ho, ho, yo, ho, 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 whoa. And he can, like, fire off, like, like freezing soul bullets from his hands or whatever. And, like, freezing ice breath or something. You know, because he's able to, you know, take a huge chunk of this underworld power and then use it to his own devices. Might only be for a brief amount of time where his body would be able to handle it. But, um, yeah. That, I think that would be a pretty sick awakening. In fact, we might find out later in the story with all the crazy stuff with Brook's fruit. The Yomi Yomi no Mi might have, you know, the potential to be one of the strongest fruits in the story. Right? It might just be like, oh yeah, Brooke, you know, if you truly master this power, you literally have the ability to master the energy of another realm that goes beyond mortal understanding and making it your own and bending it to your will. Alright, this, this is like in Yu Yu Hakusho when Hiei, like, calls on the power of a dragon from the depths of spirit world to be his servant. And he does it, you know? And he, like, like takes, like, oh, no, dragon, you listen to me now. That's kind of like Brook, except instead of the dragon of the darkness flame, it's, like, the green freezing aura of the underworld, or he's like, oh, no, 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 you're mine now. I control you, all right? So, yeah, Brook, uh, Brook's soul has uh, all of his memories and personalities stored on it, and along with all his other bodily functions, you know, like a memory of his nervous system and digestive system and all that, so he can still eat and everything, uh, and also the soul is contained inside of his bones themselves, and also he can radiate this energy outward like a radioactive ghost skeleton from Danny Phantom. I had fun today. Did you guys have fun today? I had fun today with this video. Yeah. Yeah, what do you think, Barry? Oh, I gotta do the next episode on Barry. How does Barry's body work? You, 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 there are some things that just should not be known. But anyway, um, okay. I'm not really sure how this is gonna be received, if this was enjoyable to listen to or what, but, uh, I think we broke through some of the boundaries today, guys. I think we figured out, really, some secrets about Brooke and how awesome he really is. Okay, so, thanks for watching. Uh, this is P Teching 101 signing out. If yeah, uh, bye.